Warning. My fanfic contains mentions of blood, abuse, and torture. Viewer discretion is advised. Five years after Miss Le Fay's kidnapping, Sebastian and Anne Sallow were outside their home in Feldcroft, playing with a Niffler that had scurried about. The Niffler had stolen a little handmade family crest from Sebastian's pocket, which had all but gathered his full attention until a raging storm began. Clouds of blue and black were swirling in a peculiar way overhead. The wind was raging. Thunder clapped and lightning was striking various spots around the hamlet. Sebastian and Anne were bewildered and held on to one another as the wind picked up more fiercely. Suddenly, a bright blue light emanated from the center of the swirling clouds. A large bolt of lightning struck the ground with force, causing Sebastian and Anne to launch backwards onto their rears. By the time they had opened their eyes, the storm had begun to dissipate, and a rather familiar figure lay tattered on the ground before them. The figure was that of a young woman. She was unconscious, lying on her left side with a tattered Slytherin uniform that seemed to be several sizes too small. Her clothing was torn and tattered, which revealed various scars that were littered across her skin. Her auburn hair was long and matted. Anne approached the unconscious girl with caution while Sebastian drew his wand. Anne's curious expression changed to that of shock as she noticed the rosy pink hair strands that framed the young woman's face. Sebastian's brow raised as he looked at his sister curiously. He began to slowly approach them, and as he came around to see the young woman's face, his mouth dropped in shock. The twins had exchanged glances before kneeling beside her, shaking her in an attempt to regain her consciousness. Carefully, they turned the young woman onto her back. Anne flinched back as she noticed a large gash on her left side. A pool of the woman's blood began to form beneath her. Without a second thought, Anne removed her scarf from her neck and placed it onto the wound, applying pressure to stop the bleeding. She then turned her attention to Sebastian. Sebastian, quickly! I need a Wiganweld potion. They should be with my potions kit. Sebastian hadn't realized he was in some sort of trance. He had been staring at the young woman with shock and confusion littered across his face. Now, Sebastian! Anne's frantic tone had snapped him out of his trance as he scrambled to his feet and took off in a sprint back to their home. He burst through the front door and shuffled frantically through Anne's kit. He managed to find a Wiganweld potion and held it firmly in his grasp as he sprinted back out the door. Sebastian slid against the wet, muddy earth as he handed the potion off to his sister. Anne quickly uncorked the potion and delicately poured its contents into the girl's mouth. The twins watched carefully as they waited eagerly to see if the potion's effects were working. However, the wound continued to bleed. Sebastian acted quickly and cradled the young woman into his arms as both he and Anne rushed back to their home. He delicately placed the unconscious girl into his bed as Anne rushed over with a muggle first aid kit. She frantically ripped gauze out of the kit and began wrapping the young woman's waist. After she was bandaged, Anne and Sebastian paced around the cottage with their gazes locked onto the unconscious woman. Well, what do we do now? We just have to hope she wakes soon. Over an hour had gone by before the young woman finally awakened from her slumber. She sat up abruptly in a panic as her gaze wandered the cottage with fear in her eyes. Sebastian, who was sitting in a chair by the bed, noticed her abrupt awakening and quickly stood up to approach the young woman. Relax. It's all right. You're safe here. The young woman looked at Sebastian with confusion at first, but her expression softened as she realized who it was. S Sebastian, is, is it really you? Yes, it's me. Where have you been? You... You disappeared. I... I was kidnapped. By my uncle. He tortured me, Sebastian. What? How did he get into the castle? Why didn't you come back? I... If you were trapped, how did you wind up here? I... I practiced. Practiced? I'm not sure I follow. I don't know how to explain it. I have this... this ability to do wandless magic. Eventually, I must have got something right. I... I pictured us playing in Feldcroft when we were younger. I guess that's how I wound up here. Well, I'm glad you're back. Actually, we start our fifth year tomorrow. What? Fifth year? Well, 
Yeah. You've been gone for about five years. Didn't you know? It's rather hard keeping track of time in a dungeon. Right. That... well... Are you coming with us to Hogwarts? I should, but I don't have any supplies. No need to worry. Anne and I will help you find everything you need, so don't fret. Oh, before I forget, do you happen to have a bucket of water nearby? I can fetch some for you. What do you need the water for, exactly? Mika smiled, but didn't say a word in response. Instead, she carefully unwrapped her wood and placed one of her hands into the bucket of water. She closed her eyes and took in a deep breath. Her eyes opened abruptly, except... Her hazel eyes were now glowing a vibrant turquoise. Water began to travel up her arm as it trailed its way to her waist, where her wound was located. The bubble of water that formed around her wound began to glow the same turquoise. Her wound began to close rapidly. All that remained in its place was a vicious scar. She then closed her eyes and exhaled sharply as she withdrew her hand from the bucket of water. Meanwhile, Sebastian stared in complete amazement with his mouth gaped wide open. Mika shifted her legs over the edge of the bed to sit upright. Much better. Thank you, Sebastian. End of chapter one, part one. More to come. Most of my chapters are rather long, so quite a few of them will be split into parts. Stay tuned, and thank you.